Okay, boys and girls, today we're doing a bit of a follow-up video. We're going to be talking about the very much notorious and well-loved Gerber Strongarm versus the Amora Garberg. And I'm doing this video as a bit of a follow-up because I got a lot of questions in a previous video where I talked about why I like the uh, Mora Garberg. Uh, in comments, I got a lot of questions asking me why I liked the Mora Garberg more than the Gerber Strongarm. So I thought instead of trying to write out comments and respond to everyone, I would actually break it down into a video. So without any further ado, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, check out the Instagram. The links are all down in the description below. Now let's jump into it. Okay, so in my video where I said five, or in my video, I talked about four knives that were better than the Gerber Strongarm. Now, that video still remains largely true, but there was one knife that ironically and admittedly, I have so many knives that I can't quite remember everything at every time, but admittedly, the Mora Garberg should have been on that list. Now, that did not stop people from finding my videos where I praise the Mora Garberg and talk about it quite a bit and why I like it and there is a lot of truth to people's rebuttals saying you know why do I like the Garberg and I don't like the strong arm they are reasonably similar in price reasonably similar in size reasonably similar in performance and features you know they're both full tang they're both you know uh, plastic over molded and so I thought I would take the time today to break down why I think the Gerber <laughs> The Garberg is better. And excuse me if I get tongue-tied, I'm already getting tongue-tied a little bit. The Gerber Strongarm and the Mora Garberg are kind of similar in name. So uh, yeah, if I get tongue-tied, I get tongue-tied. But uh, let's start off with the Garberg and kind of, you know, pick up where we left off why I dislike the Garberg. <laughs> The Gerber strong arm. So let's pick up where we left off and talk about why I dislike the strong arm. So the primary complaint uh, that I have with the strong arm, well, there's a couple. One, I don't think that the build quality is quite up to spec or quite how it should be for an American made knife. In addition to that, I dislike the cheap Chinese 420 HC steel that is on this blade because while it is durable, like many other steels, at this price point of around $100 or to $80, there are much better steels, even stainless steels, like we'll get into in a moment, that are much better performers. So, uh, you know, there's not a lot of value being offered in this particular unit. Lastly is the handle in the ergonomics. I really, this is a quite a personal thing, but for me, I never really loved the strong arm ergonomics and I felt that the blade or the handle thickness itself as you guys can probably see here is quite a bit thinner than even something like the Garberg and so uh, that coupled with the fact that there's this divot in the middle it leads to the handle feeling like it really doesn't fill my hand so what that means when a handle is too thin means that you have to hold the knife tighter which fatigues your hand faster so that is kind of the initial rundown of why I dislike the strong arm. So with those statements being said, why the Garberg is better? Why is this a more suitable knife? So first off, the steel is a big upgrade. Now I do think that this knife could be made slightly better, but even if you notice here, when it comes down to the grind lines, as I can hopefully get closer to the uh, camera, you'll notice that the grind line on the Garberg starts way before the grind line on the strong arm. Now, when it comes down to the Garberg, you'll notice little improvements like that. But in addition to that, you're rocking 14C28N Sandvik steel, which is by no means a super steel or a super duper high quality steel, but it is a definite improvement. It is not the Chinese made 420HC that we see in the Garberg. So already we see an improvement in materials and build quality. But aside from that, the handle is far more filling. As I previously showed, you know, and as you guys can see here, that with the Garberg, the the handle kind of swells out in the middle, whereas with the strong arm, it gives the appearance that it swells out. But realistically, if you look at this little divot here, uh, when you actually go to put your hand and your fingers on the center of the strong arm, your hands end up or your fingers end up going into that divot, which means that you're not holding on to as thick of a knife as you might think. 
So when it comes down to it, uh, one complaint I got or people were saying, you know, you seem to dislike the plastic handle of the gar or the strong arm, but you seem to like the plastic handle of the Garberg. And the reason why is purely ergonomics. I really don't have any issues with this rubber over molded grip. I do think that the hard plastic is a little bit hard and I understand this is a tactical knife. So that is the reason for these uh, kind of guards on the finger and on the spine. But at the same time too, that, that is a dislike as far as ergonomics go, because trying to get your finger or your thumb rather on the spine of the blade is nearly impossible back up here due to the fact of this upper guard. Now you'll notice that the Garberg does not have that upper guard, so your hand can easily transition from the spine onto, or sorry, from the back of the handle onto the spine pretty seamlessly because there is no forward guard. And in fact, the other nice thing about this handle is because there's no real guard in front of either the finger or the spine, or kind of where your thumb would be or back of your hand, you can actually enter change and have the blade in more of a reverse facing if you want to do something like a chest lever. So it is more useful and advantageous to have a very uh, ambidextrous or homogenous handle that does not have a lot of fancy design or guard to it for that reason. So aside from that, like I said, these are both full tang. Now, of course, Moras are made in Sweden, though I think many people would consider that a Swedish made knife would be certainly comparable to the build quality of an American made knife. So I don't think there's a huge discrepancy there, but uh, I will say this, the Garberg, the strong arm is slightly thicker as you guys can hopefully see here, uh, you know, the Garberg is slightly smaller and slightly thinner, but when it comes down to it, realistically, uh, strength wise, I really don't think that there'll be much of a strength difference between these two blades as a whole. Now, granted, like I said, the biggest, uh, or you now granted the biggest difference will be in performance, such as say you want to baton a piece of wood, obviously a longer blade will baton bigger pieces of wood, but realistically speaking, both of these blades are under five inches in length uh, or blade length. Uh, so they're not really going to be taking on anything super heavy or super huge, unless you decide to try to uh, like baton a rock or something, but that's kind of a uh, user negligence. So I wouldn't really count that as a case. Now, unfortunately, I do not have the multi-mount sheath for the Garberg. I have the original leather sheath because I still got this blade uh, when it was like brand new uh, when it first came out. So I got it with the leather sheath before they really made the multi-mount. But from what I can tell, the multi-mount is extremely similar to the sheath of the Garberg. Sorry of this strong arm. And once again, you know, this just shows yet another knife that is ultimately very similar in size, in weight, in builds, intentions, quality, uh, or build intentions, but is a better knife for the price. And overall, you know, once again, I, I think I have to communicate this message because another thing that I got a lot of questions about when it came to the strong arm was the fact that, you know, a lot of people thought that I was trying to say, you know, well, ditch your strong arm, throw it in the trash can and go get a better knife. If you have a strong arm, I don't think that these are horrible knives. You know, I don't think that if you own one that you should go out and sell it immediately. You know, I don't think that these knives are terrible for what they are. I'm just saying, especially as a new person, you know, someone who is looking to get into outdoor blades, there are better options in this day and age for the price of what the Garberg is going now that, for what the strong arm is going for now, that offer better value. So if you don't own a strong arm, I would recommend getting something like a Garberg or the aforementioned four knives that are better than the strong arm in my opinion. Now, if you already have a strong arm, good, keep it. You know, it's not a horrible knife and it's not going to probably fail you. It's just that there are certain quality control standards that I feel uh, Gerber has dropped the ball on this blade with. 
and overall I don't think that it is the world's best knife. Now to be fair I'm going to be rolling in some more Gerbers here soon to test out other Gerber options and kind of showcase the general gist of why uh, I don't love Gerbers but before I do that you know before I just vehemently speak against them you know I want to have a few test samples maybe they'll change my mind maybe I'm completely in the wrong but as far as it goes and as far as it stands, like I said, uh, the Garberg, uh, the BK-18 by K-Bar, the Condor Terrasaur, the Cold Steel SRK, you know, these knives are definitely better. They offer better value. And even if we wanted to start talking about more expensive knives, you know, pushing into the SC4 territory, once again, going to be a better blade. Okay guys, so hopefully you enjoyed that quick breakdown between the Mora Garberg and the Gerber Strongarm. Hopefully I didn't uh, get their names mixed up too many times, but as always, God bless and I'm out.